The Indian Institute of Management Bangalore or IIMB is one of the leading business schools in Asia and is ranked among the top 50 global B schools. It is considered among the top institutions for business and management education in the country, providing a range of programs related to business, public policy and society. IIMB is proud of its eventful journey spanning five decades. It is led by over 150 eminent faculty members and through the years has been home to over 25,000 alumni who have occupied positions of leadership in institutions and enterprises all over the world. Right from its founding, IIMB has been resolute in fostering academic excellence while being responsive to the environment in terms of the requirements of business, government and society. But the journey to the top has been challenging. IIMB's rise is a story of endurance and resilience, readiness to reflect, review and learn, building on the institution's strengths and striving for excellence. It is also a story of the indomitable spirit of purpose and intent. Let's start from the very beginning. Established in 1972, IIMB began with a unique vision which was to take formal management to the undermanaged sectors of the economy. Consistent with the dominant political and economic philosophies of those times, the institute in Bangalore was initially set up to cater to the needs of public sector enterprises. The institute was formally inaugurated on 28th October 1973 by Shri Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India. Shri T. A. Pai and Professor N. S. Ramaswamy were the first chairman and director respectively. For the proposed campus, the government of Karnataka offered 100 acres of land free of cost on Banargatta Road along with a cash contribution of Indian rupees 30 lakhs. Initially, when we joined, the infrastructure was very limited. We were operating from a temporary building on Langford Road. Then the hostel was something like three kilometers away in Jayanagar block. The first batch was notable for its small size when compared to the latter ones. There were only 50 students, which enabled them to connect with each other and the faculty, creating a memorable bond that still lasts. It was a wonderful time, 50 students and almost equal number of faculty members all trying to mentor us, interact with us and we learned a lot from each one of them. The first batch graduated with flying colours on 10th July 1976. On the same day, the board approved the appointment of B.V. Doshi of Messrs Stein, Doshi and Bhalla and Messrs Kanvinde and Rai to design the campus. During that period, I had also gone to Madurai Temple and uh, I was amazed with the kind of quality of that temple. Is that First of all, there are these corridors and then there are these courtyards and in that courtyard, families and other people linger and then there are shrines. So really, you feel like a blown-up village but very, very convenient. So the whole question was natural place and place where we have interaction of people and the campus eventually will grow and expand. So this is how it began. In 2018, B.V. Doshi was awarded the Pritzker Prize, one of the highest architecture honours in the world. Today, the campus is a pilgrimage of sorts for those interested in the art of building comprising a network of corridors, courtyards and external spaces allowing for future extensions, the design allows for academic exchanges to be carried beyond the classroom.
Today, the campus is a lush green paradise and home to a variety of flora and fauna amidst the bustling city of Bangalore. But that was not always the case. When the institute moved into this campus around 1981-82, this was a barren campus. Photographs of those times show that it is a brown campus. The aim, according to Doshi, was to create an atmosphere where you don't see divides and doors. Trees and teachers take time to grow, as Professor N.S. Ramaswamy put it, and over the years, consistent and creative efforts were made to green the campus. I can still recall the moment I walked into this beautiful campus. I just fell in love with the greenery and the natural habitat that encircled the classrooms and the offices. I knew immediately that I found the place where I belong and wanted to call it my home. In the 1980s, IIMB was already gaining recognition in academic circles. When we started the institute, the focus of the institute was not only the basic disciplines of management, such as marketing, finance, etc. But the focus is also on what we thought were the under-managed sectors of the economy, such as agriculture, power, transport, health, habitat. These were called the sectors. As a matter of fact, many of these faculty members diverted their energies into management-oriented research in these sectors, published a lot of articles, journal papers, reports, research reports, consulting reports. As a matter of fact, a large amount of research and consulting came through the sectors. We also started a postgraduate program in each of these sectors. But the founding vision did not gather much support from potential public sector employers or students. Professor J. Philip took charge as director on 15th April 1985. The next item on the agenda was to review the institute's offerings to see if they were viable in the prevalent market for both students and the institute. After much debate, the institute moved to a broader canvas focusing on general management. Which it turned out to be, although it was a real good vision, looking back from today, at that time it was slightly before time. So it became necessary for us to make the change and bring the school back to the mainstream of business administration. I think the transformation of uh, IMB is indeed remarkable. It started with uh, public sector orientation, sectoral orientation, and then into more into private sector. Even when we started doing, uh, you know, allowing students to join private sector and campus interviews were allowed for private sector. Earlier it was not allowed. Professor Philip, of course, was instrumental in uh, changing the orientation. By the end of the 1980s, a new vision for the institute gained clarity. I joined the institute in 1992, and yes, the 30 years really flew by. But by the time I retired last year, it was one of India's finest management schools. The 1990s set off a period of considerable evolution and growth for the country, as well as for the city of Bangalore. I joined the institute in 1991, when these policies of moving towards greater government control of the economy was being abandoned in favor of liberalization, markets and competition. There was an increasing consensus that management education had to be reinvented to meet the changing needs of industry. And I think what I saw in K.R.S. Murthy at that time, because he was director and he was navigating IIM Bangalore through quite a bit around what was transforming at that point of time because IIM Bangalore was really coming off its own 
and I saw a, a lot of strength and courage in everything that he did. The following years saw IIMB take rapid strides towards restructuring its offerings. Attention was focused on recasting the academic side of IIMB, starting with faculty recruitment and extending to reinvigorating every program of study. The number of optional courses relevant to industry along with new elective courses was increased to keep up with the changing environment. During this period, the institute also went through a significant rebranding exercise. The new logo incorporated a modern design showing the sun and its rays. The logo was derived from the newly adopted Sanskrit motto, which means, let our study be enlightening. Another factor that contributed to IIMB's rise in relevance and stature was the rapid growth of the IT industry and with it, the proliferation of multinational companies in Bangalore. As Bangalore grew, so did IIMB. On 31st December 1995, IIMB became the first management institute in India to have full internet connectivity. One day, Professor K. R. S. Murthy casually asked, should we be on the net? I told him, sir, we should have been on the net yesterday. IIM students on a daily basis consume probably much more information than a typical IIT student. So we found that IIMs getting onto the internet will probably make far more sense. These technological improvements had immediate payoffs as IIMB started gaining recognition across India and worldwide. In September 1996, IIMB stood at number 11 among the best business schools in the Asia-Pacific region, according to Asia Incorporated. Leveraging this growth, IIMB launched exchange programs to provide students with international exposure. IIMB students were placed in international firms for the first time in the final placements during 1997-98. IIMB entered into international partnerships and collaborations or global alliances which included exchange programs with various universities across the world. IIMB's thrust towards internationalization and recognition of its rising stature was signaled when it partnered with Hitotsubashi University Japan, INSEAD France, Lancaster University UK and McGill University Canada in the International Master's Program in Practicing Management or IMPM Consortium and the Bangalore module of IMPM was held at IIMB in November 1996. The best compliment you can say for that growth period was from Henry Mintzberg. Yes, IMPM. IMP. Henry walks into the room and says, we want to collaborate with IMB. Then my first question to Henry was, your colleague, Professor Pradeep Kandwala, is heading IMA. What made you choose I us am. for the collaboration? And he said, Professor Murthy, we do our homework. And of all the institutions in India, the best gradient is IMBs. Okay, moving up. One of the ways IIMB chose to add value to the industry and the practice of management was by setting up centres of excellence to focus on new and emerging areas of research and education. In 1998, the Government of India selected IIMB to set up the Centre for Public Policy. The Government of India decided that there ought to be a reorientation of the functioning of the senior bureaucracy in the country. And they were looking for a mechanism to make that transformation. Before that, it was the era of public administration, uh, controls and so forth. And, and the transition was towards what might be called public management. Later, in 
1997 when government of india wanted to set up a special program for public systems management we bid for what's called the central for public policy there are other institutes including i am ahmedabad i am calcutta bidding for the same opportunity but our research which was done between 1974 and 1997 in various under managed sectors that put us on the top so without any doubt government of india selected us i am bangalore to host the center for public policy on 10th july 2000 the center for public policy was officially established this underlined that iimb did not lose sight of the importance of the public sector 10 years after liberalization iimb got the opportunity to accommodate its founding vision in a more appropriate setting lot of these training programs which are targeted towards government officers including indian administrative service indian foreign service indian forest service income tax we were able to attract those programs into the institute because of the sectoral orientation which started in the beginning thus the post graduate program in public policy and management or pgppm was officially launched on 7th june 2002 we also had an international immersion program as part of this two year in which uh, we all went to maxwell school in syracuse university for 8 weeks and i found that also to be very very useful to me I have always aspired to become a complete and composite public policy professional and I would say IIM Bangalore has played a huge role in this. To build a platform for co-creation of knowledge with the Indian IT industry, IIM Bangalore launched the Center for Software and Information Technology Management, CSITM in 1998. The postgraduate program in software management PGSM was launched in 1998 as a weekend program for software professionals signaling for the institute's recognition of the needs of the burgeoning IT industry and its commitment to its vision to address the needs of management expertise for a globalizing industry So I went back to my good acquaintance in the IT industry and said why don't you contribute to I am an endowment to develop this particular program and after talking to all these top level people i was succeed, i succeeded in raising 3 and a half crores as an endowment for research for adopting the pgp curriculum to the needs of the it industry and doing research in the needs of the it industry so we set up what is called the center for software management with a, a, a grant of 3 and a half crores drawn uh, from wipro from oracle from saskin now from motorola so many of these later on infosys also joined Another such center was the NSR cell launched in the year 2000. Mr NS Raghavan the then joint managing director of Infosys Technologies donated generously to revamp and enhance the activities of the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies. This led to the creation of the famed NS Raghavan Center for Entrepreneurial Learning or NSR cell. In early days anything happen around entrepreneurship it just happened right here at nsr cell and we had quite a bit of initiative started coming out of nsr cell back then so one of the things that we were interested in at that point of time was to understand how to set nsr cell to be different from the other incubators so first we were open to anybody most of the incubators and academic institutions were open only to the alumni and students and nsr cell decided that they would be open to anybody who wanted to start a venture in india so in addition one thought that we always lived up to was these words that professor kumar said that when in doubt we should incubate 
given the fact that we are a government institution and the fact that we had a little bit of a corpus given to us by our benefactor, Mr. Raghavan, we shouldn't really look at startups as a gatekeeper for uh, investors. We wanted to nurture a set of people who are interested in entrepreneurship. So anybody who was extremely motivated to start a venture, and if the venture was interesting, we incubated them. IIMB's aspiration to be counted among the best global institutions warranted an emphasis on research with world-class benchmarks. And I always say, in my talks also I say, if you want to be known as with the students and so on in the, in the institute, you should be a good teacher. And that's how students recognize you. If you want to be known with the corporate world and so on, you have to do consulting and do practical things. But if you want international recognition, you have to publish in international journals. That's the only way you look at it. So now it's your choice. As a fitting transition to the new millennium, in the year 2000, IIMB was placed first among the top 100 business schools in India in the Business Today rankings. In the first few years of the new millennium, IIMB was trying to consolidate the gains of the previous decade and scale new heights through an emphasis on teaching and research on a global footing. At that time, no, I, I mean, my thought were essentially don't diversify your activities and programs too much. Focus on three or four major activities and uh, grow in that, in, in that area. Recruit faculty who will help you to grow and attain much higher, better image in those, those areas. Uh, during this period, the relationship between the Board of Governors and the faculty under the leadership of the uh, director was very close uh, in all the institutes. I was familiar with what was happening in Ahmedabad and Calcutta as well. And uh, there was a lively debate both in the uh, meetings of the Board of Governors as well as outside and to uh, between the faculty and the uh, members of the uh, board to uh, decide the direction in which our teaching programs should uh, be directed. On September 10, 2003, the Centre for Corporate Governance and Sustainability, then the Centre for Corporate Governance and Citizenship, was set up. This centre aims to enhance corporate governance practices by leveraging the Institute's world-class faculty and research capabilities. In 2003, the Wall Street Journal's Guide to Top Business Schools placed IIMB among the next 50 business schools on the list of 100. It was the only Asian business school to be featured. It, was, it is obvious that institutions are a function of their own trajectory and no two institutions are alike. And it was also clear to me that IMB had to design its own path towards excellence and which would incorporate its existing strengths, which would build new strengths in order to um, manage the changing times for the society and the business and then emerge as a leading global institution out of India in the 21st century. That set the stage in quite some ways for what I was going to think and do at I'm Bangalore. IIMB received major international recognition in November 2008 when the institute was ranked as the top B school in South and Central Asia and the Middle East by Ed Universal. The new long term vision was adopted by the board on 16th January 2009. We built leaders and entrepreneurs through holistic, transformative, and innovative education. Further, IIMB would be known for its excellence in research and scholarship, global character, values, diversity and impact on its diverse stakeholders and society. 
On April 3rd of the same year, the One Year Executive Postgraduate Program or EPGP was introduced, further diversifying IIMB's offerings. In line with its renewed vision and striving for excellence, academic research was brought back into focus with an emphasis on rigor and global academic standards. Building reputation through research um, was a tough task, but it was perhaps the most exciting um, uh, task that we were undertaking. There was one other thing that the institution was a pioneer of. And that was instituting a tenure system. Um, we were very keen that we institute a five or six year tenure process, which gives a young faculty enough time and chance to do something spectacular. As the stature of IIMB ascended, so did the stature of the alumni, who emerged as influential stakeholders. There is this sort of concept that if you come to IIM, your career has to be in sort of investment banking or consulting. Of course, today entrepreneurship um, or private equity, there are these perhaps these preconceived notions about what a management education sets you up for. I am uh, incredibly grateful that the institution allowed me to be. And I think I and perhaps others like me are an example that a management education from an institution like IIMB can set you up for a career in any area of your passion or um, of your liking. And uh, these skills are still e equally valid in uh, whatever domain that you choose to continue your life's work in. I am Bangalore Alumni Association, or IMBA as we call it, has been a fantastic network of its alums. Over the last few years, it has conducted several programs. It has held um, a global thought leadership conclave called IMBU, which continues to roll on with four editions past and two online editions past. It has created several other platforms of engagement within alumni, benefit programs for the alumni, with a beautiful project called IMB Alumni Club. Another feather in its cap was the accreditation in 2010 by the prestigious EFMD Quality Improvement System or EQUIS for the first time. With the emergence of technology-enabled e-learning, IIMB wanted to be at the forefront of new technology-led innovations and started offering massive open online courses or MOOCs through its digital learning initiative, IIMBX. This was done in partnership with edX, a not-for-profit online initiative of Harvard and MIT. I felt that technology was the future in education and I thought that that would be a very valuable thing to bring to IIM Bangalore. And at that first meeting with, uh, with Kiran, I shared my conviction about using technology to create a capability where the IM could go well beyond its traditional audience. And she was completely for it. So we invested a lot of time and money to ensure that these were not just simple, generic online programs, but that they were very well curated and uh, you know, the, the outcome of that effort was phenomenal. And I think we actually stood out as having some of the best MOOC programs on, in, in, globally. Six years ago, uh, one of the members of the uh, Board of Governors of uh, IIM Bangalore approached me whether I'm happy to become the chairperson of IIM Bank. I was delighted. I told him that if you all choose me to that position, I'll be the happiest person to accept the offer. The first department I visited after becoming the chairman of IIM Bangalore was their uh, division of uh, digital education. 
online education. They made tremendous progress. The IIMBX program is founded on the philosophy that everyone, irrespective of financial or regional constraints, should have access to quality education. On 4th April 2016, IIMB topped the inaugural National Institutional Ranking Framework or NIRF by the Ministry of Human Resource Development. IIMB transitioned to a new avatar on January 31st, 2018 when the IIM Act came into force. It was a terrific opportunity for me to get into this leadership role of what was already uh, if you will, a precious jewel amongst management institutions in the country. One of the first aspects of governance was when the new act was passed and we had to go ahead with implementing whatever the act prescribed. Actually, the act was uh, a terrific boon because uh, it allowed us to move from the postgraduate diploma granting to a full-fledged degree granting as the MBA and similarly for the fellow program in management into a PhD program. I think this uh, kind of gave a, a better stature to IIM, especially in the international domain. In 2017, IIMB went through a visioning exercise to reflect the enlarging scope and diversity of the expectations of the stakeholders. After careful deliberation, the new vision statement was crafted. To be a global, renowned academic institution, fostering excellence in management, innovation and entrepreneurship, for business, government and society. Meanwhile, the physical possession of the land for the second campus at Jigani in Anekal Taluk, about 25 km from the Banargata Road campus, was completed during 2017-18 and construction work began. Institute has big aspirations. As you know, it is the top ranked institute in the country and clearly it is in the top uh, global list. And to keep in with that kind of aspiration to be a world-class leader in management education, I am Bangalore is investing a lot in its physical and technological infrastructure. So I'm so glad to be part of this initiative and you will very soon see a wonderful world-class campus in its new kind of facility about 25 kilometers from its current campus. And you would all agree that we could only do much uh, we could only add to the already the world-class uh, infrastructure that uh, IIM Bangalore has. Education as a sector took a major hit due to the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. However, IIMB was quick to respond to the challenges brought about by the pandemic and the lockdown. When the pandemic hit in uh, 2020, uh, we went into lockdown, students couldn't come to campus, uh, faculty couldn't go to classes. At that point, our efforts at digital paid off rich dividend. Many of our faculty were familiar with using this technology and they began to use technology to continue our classes throughout the pandemic. Now this is a, an interesting point that IMB did not skip even one class. IIM Bangalore is what it is today, thanks to the efforts and really hard work put in by several people over the last 50 years. I would go back to the founding itself where IMB was set up in tune with the policy priorities of that time, which was to galvanize the public sector. But the amazing thing about IMB is that over the years, we have been 
very successful at adapting to the changing environment. Whether it be the liberalization in the 90s, the internationalization of Indian business, the need for advanced policy management, or more recently, uh, business analytics. I am Bangalore has managed to come up with the right academic programs and the relevant research programs to meet the needs of all these different requirements. So to my mind, if you look back at I am Bangalore's success over the last 50 years, it's largely owed to the fact that many visionaries, directors, professors, administrators, were able to understand what change was happening around them and craft academic programs and research programs that were relevant to meet those challenges. To me, that's really the secret of IM Bangalore success. In a very true blue MBA style, I would say that there are a few things that I've learned uh, from IMB that I carry with me every single day of my life, be it my personal life or my professional life. And I'm going to put it across in a very my own personal framework. I'll call it the 3P framework perspectives, potential and perseverance. I am Bangalore really for me is home. It's a place that nurtured me. It gave me the opportunities. It accepted me with my flaws and challenges, but subtly gave me ways to kind of see the mirror and see where I could find my improvements. Today, recognition for IIMB's accomplishments, stature and leadership standing has come in from national and globally accredited quarters. IIMB is featured in the FT and QS rankings among the first two schools in India and among the leading B schools globally. Integral to IIMB's philosophy has been the value placed on social relevance and impact. Diversity and inclusiveness are essential aspects of the Institute's pursuit of its vision and mission. Programs such as the NS Ramaswamy Pre-Doc Program, the NSR Cell Programs for Women Entrepreneurs, and the Rural Outreach under the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan Initiative of the Government of India, among others, have widened the scope and field of IIMB's social involvement. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion was established in January 2010 to address the needs of students with disabilities on the IIMB campus. Our office has done a variety of things to accommodate all kinds of persons with a disability, all kinds of students with a disability. We have students who have locomotor disability, some people might be on wheelchair, some people might use electric scooters. We have persons who cannot hear well, who cannot see well. More recently, we also have students who have what we refer to as intellectual disabilities. And we cater to each student individually. I have been in this institution for three decades, which we call a temple of knowledge. Currently, I'm holding the role of hostel. In the hostel, here we always invite students as if they are walking from one home to another. At IIMB, there is a strong focus on environmental awareness, positive impact and sustainable living. As we look forward, we see sustainability as a major issue that the country will face. And hence, we are geared up towards making sustainability a central part of our future endeavors. Just to give you a few examples, we are looking at how quickly can we go to net zero in terms of water consumption. We are also looking at how much of our power we can generate through sustainable methods in the campus itself. Today that's around 15%, we would like to increase that to 25% over the next few years. We are also looking at how we can recycle things much more effectively so that our waste generation is much less. So we are trying to involve all the students in various initiatives on campus, which will of course help us make the campus green and sustainable, but will also hopefully ingrain in them the ability to take these initiatives to the industry and practice them wherever they are working. So what's next at IIM Bangalore? This is a question we've often asked ourselves in recent years. And now we have some clear picture of what we want to do. 
and we want to see how can we create more impact from this presence in the online learning space. Currently, we have about 60 courses, but we are trying to figure out is there a way we can use all this content to help enhance impact in some of the undermanaged sectors of the Indian economy. The second thing we are looking at is can we use our online learning to develop entrepreneurs in the country. IMB has a long history of being involved with entrepreneurship development and we see the next frontier of this as launching a three-year or four-year undergraduate program online in digital business and entrepreneurship. Thanks to the generosity of the government of Karnataka, we now have another piece of land about 25 kilometers south of the current campus where we hope to develop an undergraduate campus. This campus will host four-year undergraduate programs in economics, data science, behavioral science, and sustainability with a liberal arts flavor. That is, we will give a very good foundation in critical thinking, communication, leadership, etc. So we hope that this will be the future crucible or the future place where the leaders of India will be created. continues the historic journey of IIM Bangalore. From a fledgling institute setting off on an adventure into uncharted fields to becoming one of the best B-schools in the world, this journey has been nothing short of magical. This would not have been possible without the many stakeholders who have been with the institute throughout this journey. The Government of India, the Government of Karnataka, the Governing Board of the institution, the committed faculty and staff and multiple generations of students, including our 25,000 plus alumni, who have been solid pillars of support throughout its fabled history. Let these 50 years of achievement and success be the stepping stone to greater glory as the future unfolds. Let's build a glorious tomorrow A grand chapter that's new Leading progress with pride We are I, I am Bangalore We are I Yeah.